episode 3 of the Manchester United save on FIFA 22 career mode and last time out you missed a cracker if you didn't see it already the video is going to go up there so stick that in a brand new tab to check out later but you missed a cracker we got our first three points of the season a 2-0 victory against Wolves where Cristiano got a brace and on top of that there was some transfer business as well in came Ruben Neves, a big £50 billion deal with Edison Cavani going the other way. And we had some upgrades at centre-half as well, with Fakayo Tomori coming in to partner with Rafael Varane, and back up Wesley Fofana, that French link there between the two centre-halves. And we are in a good position moving forwards. We have to look at the left-wing position. And last time out, we ended up on a little bit of a cliffhanger. We have a couple of options to explore in the transfer hub here, we have Pedro Neto or the more expensive Mikel Ayazabal. And I think just about the board expectations, it's all about short-term success at the minute at Manchester United with big critical objectives in domestic success and continental as well. So it's about short-term gains. And because of that, we'll have to be thinking about the here and now. So we're gonna go in for Mikel Ayazabal from Real Sociedad and see if we can get him for a decent price. It's thinking between 80 and about 150 million. So we're gonna start low and see if we can get a decent deal for him. And they want 108 million, but I think there's gonna be some room for negotiation there. We're gonna try and pull them down a little bit. We're gonna go in with 90. 92 million English pounds. And they want 96, so we're almost there. I think if we can just meet that in the middle, happy day it should, it should be. 94 million for Mikel Isabel at third time lucky. It's going to be the deal. That's great value under the 100 million mark for elite left wing quality. So he needs to more than double his wages. We're not going to trim him down too much. And I think it's probably fair enough for the calibre of player that he is. We're going to see if he's going to take a straight 100,000 pounds a week and he's not we're gonna to have to pay the big bucks for big quality but i'm excited to see what contribution he can bring now 86 manager rating you can't grumble at but we haven't got much left in the kitty i think we can probably do a little bit of fiddling around though if we go in at the budget we don't need that balance for the wages so if we trim that right down to 500k ish then we've got 75 million and i think from there we can go in and look at bolstering the central defensive midfield option by buying Joao Palinha from Sporting Lisbon. And we reckon he's going to come in between 47 and 66 million. And really, that probably is going to be us. He's six foot three, medium high work rate, and he's going to be a brick wall. Look at those defensive stats already down there. So let's go in and see if we can pinch him for a half decent price and just offer in a sell-on clause as well just to sweeten them up a little bit and we'll have a deal 60 million flat and that's probably us done so question came in opportunity came in from Yasin Shaban again quickly becoming a friend of the channels Yasin and he's offering the services really he's recommended Ferry Valverde and Teo Fernandez looking at the team for me, it's probably going to be a hard pass this time round. I think in the centre of midfield, we've already bought Ruben Neves, and that will be the exact position that would pay Fede Valverde. No doubt a quality player, but that position is probably covered now. And at left back, Teo Fernandez, no doubt he's quality. He's a similar age to Luke Shaw. He's not too much younger than him. Um, and Teo has a much better potential, no doubt. But I think when he's coming at about 75 million, that sort of money we didn't have to spend on the left pack position when we'll have Luke Shaw who's quite capable and Alex Tellers who's a decent backup as well at 81 rated. So I think it's probably a pass for now but massively appreciate you joining in with the comments you see and anybody else that wants to fire in as well. Hit me up with the comments all through the series with your thoughts and we'll be featuring you in the videos to come for the future. I just wonder whether we can go and try and get Madweke and he's left footed, it'd be great cover for Mayazabal on the left hand side 
Yeah, so we can take Medweke, we're gonna put in a selling clause, but we're not bothered because we're gonna be keeping them for this save. So we'll get him with just enough money um, to make that viable. Happy day, and that's great cover as well. Last minute deal in the transfer window. Feel like the team's in a quality place as we approach the game against Newcastle. We've got to have half an eye on the midweek fixture coming up against Villarreal. So for that reason, we're going to give Ronaldo a little bit of a breather and have Marcus Rashford starting up top in the centre forward role. And apart from that, we're going to go with a pretty much a full strength 11. We're going to have impact subs ready on the bench. We've got Madweke, just newly signed. We've got Alanga and we've got options for defence, like for Fana, just in case things turn a little bit pear-shaped and we get an injury. If you're liking the look of this series, by the way, and you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. About three quarters of you haven't subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Let's get on with the first game of the episode against Newcastle United. It's going to be a bit of a bit of sweet victory if we get the three points against my home team. But loyalty has to be with our controlling team, and this time it's Manchester United. Let's get into it. Mikael Ayazabal. He's going to loft one forward to so the run of Rashford, who takes it down well. Marcus Rashford comes inside, looks to shape it. Good save from Martin Dubravka. And uh, that's a good move from Manchester United over the top from new signing Ayazabal. Rashford did well to get the shot away, made the keeper work. It's Palinia. Rashford, ooh, just looked to lay off Sancho as a good effort. Promising going forward Manchester United so far in this game. Bruno Fernandes gets it to Ayazabal and there's a chance now for Man United. Numbers forward, Mikel Ayazabal with a deep cross in towards Sancho. He's just in, in with Rashford. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible goal. What was Jadon Sancho up to there? Just trying to dink it in. But in the end, Rashford cleans up a mess. And Mikel Ayazabal almost getting his first to sit there. Deep cross and he's just <laughs> gammoned it at the goal as Jadon Sancho. Rashford cleans up with a bit of flair in the end. But it's 1-0. Rashford numbers over here. Wan Basaka in some space. He can cross a ball. And does cross the ball. It's a good one. Fernandez, great goal. What a look, lovely header from Bruno Fernandez. The ball was exquisite from Aaron Wambasaka. A much more pretty on the eye than the first opening goal. He had time to look up and pick his cross, and Bruno attacks that ball beautifully, just looping it over Martin Dubravka. 2 0 the score, and things a little bit more comfortable now for the home team. Here's Tomori. Fernandez, Neves, Ruben Neves to shoot. Oh, it's a good save from Dubravka just as we hit 90 minutes there. That was probably nestling in the top corner. Shot from Ruben Neves. Just give him a little bit of time and space as Newcastle legs tire. It was a good save in the end. Bruno Grimarish, can they get a consolation goal? Chance now with Strike Gale and an opportunity. Almiron, good save. Oh, and they do get a consolation goal. 95 minutes in the clock. What's the referee playing at here? And Newcastle celebrate, but it, uh, it's going to stay 2 1. Isaac Hayden eventually slotting it in. Disappointing from the defence's point of view. They don't get the clean sheet. Nothing De Gea could do there. But why are we at 95 minutes, Ref? How are we? So we're off to Estadio de la Ceramica to play as Villarreal in the first game of this Champions League group stage this season. We're going full strength. We've got Ronaldo back up top. And despite a little bit of fitness issues from Ayazabal and Neves, we're going to be going in with the strongest eleven that we can to make the best start possible in the group stage. Sancho, Juan Bissaka. And there's an option for a cross. Deep ball free. It's Cristiano Ronaldo. Touch scores. Easy as you like, Cristiano, well rested from the weekend. And he scores Manchester United's opening goal in the Champions League. Options from the cross and picked him up well, chested down and on the half volley. What else would you expect from a 90-rated striker? Beautiful technique from Manchester United's number seven and it's 1-0 to the away team. Palinia did well. Sancho. 
Fernandez, and here goes Mikel Ayazabel. He's going to go from range. Perfect. Oh, golazo. It's Mikael Yalagozabal in his European debut, no less, for Manchester United. It's an absolute ripper from range. Look at this. He saw there was room ahead of him, and he just goes from the edge of the area, right in the top bins. You love to see it, don't you? Confidence, a little bit of bend on the outside of the foot, even. Absolute stunner and the best goal of the season, no doubt, so far from the new boy. Palinha. Looks for Ronaldo. Touch. Oh, good save from Rudy. That was a threat. And just as we approach half time, 3 0 would have been catastrophic for Villarreal. Cristiano wants it, Cristiano is through, it's going to be three scores, it's a brace for Cristiano Ronaldo, easy as you like, Villarreal centre-half just opened, parted like the Red Sea by the assist, it's an excellent ball through, and collects and scores easily, it's 3-0 now to Manchester United, job done, and a nice moment now, Wesley Fofana is going to make his debut, coming on for Rafael Varane, and Anthony Alanga, Coming on on the right hand side for Jaden Sancho. Just some fresh legs in the centre of the park to see this one out. We don't want to concede a goal in the last seven minutes or so. To Rigueros. There's Danny Parejo from range. Oh, what's happened there? It looks like he's gone straight through the keeper. Just after it was said, we didn't want to concede a goal in the last seven minutes. Is Danny Parejo. And uh, let's look at the goalkeeping and position for David De Gea. It looked like it just went straight through him. Has it taken a deflection on his left foot here? And he's, yeah, I think it's just taken a, a slight deflection and he's done De Gea. Oh, has it? It's a strange one to concede, but 3-1 the score. And that's going to be it. Final whistle goes. It's a great result. Great result for the away team, the away fans. 3-1 is the score in the end. Ronaldo coming up clutch when he won him the most. And uh, an excellent way to get three points away from home. In arguably the toughest fixture of the six in the group stage for Manchester United. And the way his, the way his fans in great voices we can hear as well. Two goals, another brace for Cristiano. An excellent start of the season for him. So great win then in the Champions League. And uh, we've got a game against West Ham now. We're going to sim. And I'll just show you why in just a moment. We're going to quick sim this one. Full sense team. And it's a 1-1 draw. So the third 1-1 of the season, which is a bit sad. And just going into the calendar, really just showing you why that we've seen that game there. Next episode, we are going to have a couple of different competitions going on. We are going to see the Mackhams. We've got Sunderland in the Cup, in the League Cup. And then after Aston Villa's home game in the league, we have a game against Atlanta. Atlanta, rather, from Italy in the Champions League so it's going to be another interesting one for sure some squad rotation going on but it's nice to see the team very much more settled and uh, picking up a couple of good wins in the games that we've played there it's been the end of episode number three and I hope you've enjoyed it and um, next time out I hope to see some more comments featured from you of course if you haven't dropped a like on the video yet please do so you'll be helping the channel grow and helping me bring better content to you of course as well as the channel grows and of course, if you haven't yet subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Before we get to episode number four, hit that subscribe button and you won't be missing out. Until then though, I've been your average FIFA guy and uh, I'll see you later.